Good day, everyone. Paul Lawrence Van here. Hope that you are having a wonderful day, just as wonderful as the one that I'm having today uh, as this uh, month is about to come to a close and we're heading into a new month. But I hope that you're doing great and everything is wonderful. Uh, what I want to talk about today, of course, is going to be on leadership. And uh, again, for those of you who don't know who I am, I want to share a little bit about my background and then it'll lead directly into uh, looking at some common leadership uh, management uh, mistakes that are made, uh, mostly when you're a, a new leader, and uh, this will help you guide you along the path so you know what to look out for. But a little bit on my background, uh, I have over 30 years of leadership experience, not only having attended uh, every leadership school that United States Air Force had to offer, but also leading people and managing things such as resources. And so as a result, I have quite a bit of experience and uh, what I do, my objective with my company, which I found at Wealth Building Academy LLC, is an educational company with an emphasis on leadership and leadership development. And so that's really what I do. And I also have a website. I welcome you to check it out. Uh, you can see it beside my name here, uh, https colon forward slash forward slash www.paulvanspeaks.com. And that will help you to learn more. So let's dive into the 10 mis common mistakes that uh, leaders make. And these, what we call rookie mistakes. It can happen to anyone. And some of these have happened to me. So I'm not too proud to say that we can all learn from the mistakes that we made as long as we don't continue to repeat them. So I'm glad that you could be with me today. So let's get started. Let's talk about um, not providing enough feedback to the people that work for us, that we supervise or that we, we uh, manage. And as a result, feedback is very critical. Let's take, for example, that you have this project, you have to go out to this contractor's plant, you have to assess their operating system to see if they can put together a contract that you need. And part of that is looking at the budget and the contractor, prospective contractor, work within the, the monetary amount that you're providing uh, per the contract? Will they be able to produce the products or services on schedule? Do they have enough employees to do the work? And do you have enough data that you can evaluate when that work is done? And lastly, uh, can this contractor add value to what you're trying to, re trying to achieve uh, for your organization? Now, if you don't, if you fail to give feedback to the people who work for you, they may go along doing that work, but doing it incorrectly or not according to the specifications. So it's very important that you provide feedback. No feedback means they're going it alone. And you have people working for you, you do not want them to go alone. And it's your job and your responsibility and your duty to ensure that the people are working according to the specifications and the requirements that you have for your organization, depending on whatever the industry happens to be. So it's very important uh, to do that, to be able to provide feedback. Next, you wanna be able to uh, have time with your team. You don't want to have a situation where you have people working for you and you're trying to do your job as a manager, leader, and supervisor, and our supervisor, and you're trying to get your work accomplished that you're not giving enough time making time for your employees. They need to hear from you. If they don't hear from you, they feel like they're on an island by themselves. And if you are managing a team or supervising a team, it's even more of your duty to be able to make time for them, listen to what they have to say. If they have a project they're working on and, and uh, it's transformational, for example, then you need to be on the cutting edge, leading them, guiding them along their path Otherwise, when the when the project gets comes to completion and they've done it all wrong, there's only one person that the leader with a title is going to point to, and guess who it is? It's going to be you. <laughs> so you want you want to make sure uh, that uh, you you are spending enough time with the people who are on your staff to do this. These are just rookie mistakes. Anyone can make these mistakes. But the key is to learn from them and not repeat them. And then being two hands off, in other words, okay, so I have 12 people working for me. 
but I'm not going to, I'm going to be hands off. I'm going to be distant. I'm just going to let them go on their own. Rookie mistake number three will get you in trouble fast. You need to be involved, not micromanaging, but at least to listen to the discussion, what's taking place, and are they on the right track? In other words, will you be able to get this project completed for the client on time? And if you're hands off, you'll never know. You'll miss that deadline. It's going to cost you not only with the person uh, that you're working with the client, but future clients, because the word will get out that they're not really uh, doing what they should do. And then uh, another problem uh, new leaders have is that they are too friendly. In other words, everyone wants to be liked. There's nothing wrong with being liked. But when you have a job to do, uh, you don't want to be overly friendly. In other words, a lot of times if you're overly friendly, which most employees are not used to, they will take advantage of that <laughs> and they will take you for granted. And so you don't want that to happen. And um, I, I remember a time that I was working and uh, I believe I was in the Pentagon and we had a really nice boss, very friendly, but we had to kind of pull him in and say, hey, look, you don't have to try to be friendly with us. We like you, but we want you to lead us. And so you, you'll need this uh, for people. And um, at the time we were doing some legislative work, working with Congress. And so it's big business. It's, it's things you have to take care of because there's so many constituents that are involved with that representative or the senator. Uh, and uh, you wanna make sure you have everything correct. And yes, there's gonna be times where you have to give people bad news. Well, I think it's okay to give people uh, they may consider it to be bad news, but it's news and information they need to help them make a better decision. And so you don't want to be too friendly where you're afraid to take this information to the people and, and they're not able to take, get the job done for you. So um, that's something to, to be uh, concerned with. And then the next one is that you have to be uh, in that position where you don't fail to define the goals. The goals are very important because you're trying to increase your business performance. And so when you set these goals, you have to set them such that they're achievable. So a lot of times you need smart goals. And uh, in, in having these smart goals, uh, you're gonna do things in a very systemic, uh, systematic approach, but you have to define what the goals are. People can't follow goals if they're not defined because they'll make up their own and it won't be their fault. As in the leadership position, it was incumbent upon you to ensure that the goals are well understood, there's clarity, and people can work towards the goal. And besides, if you set these goals, you know they're achievable. It just comes down to if you could have the right people in the right jobs to do the work within the schedule and for the purpose that it's for. And then another one is, misunderstanding motivation. You know, it oftentimes people think, okay, so they're making six figures for this job. So that's really all they want, but that's not really all they want. People really want a work-life balance. They, they want to be able to come to work in a safe environment uh, where there's no bullying, there's no micromanaging, and uh, there's respect up and down the line. And, uh, I know a lot of people want someone who has compassion. For example, if someone has a parent that is sick and uh, they, they want to be able to spend some time with their loved one. And um, this is something that you have to look at, having that empathy, having some compassion and putting yourself in, in someone else's shoes for the time because you may very well find yourself in a similar situation and you want people to be understanding of that. And I can recall when I was working uh, for an organization and my mother got sick. In fact, she was on life support. I received a call from her doctor and I uh, left my office and they told me, do not come back until your mom is okay. And um, so I stayed in that, slept by my mom's bedside for 30 days. And I helped the nurses out and I did what I could. And even though she was in a coma, I could still help in my own way. And uh, cause I had other siblings and they were working. So I took that burden off of them in terms of um, having to negotiate their time from, the, from work and their, et cetera. And then 
Uh, I came home for one weekend. I went back and my mom passed away. But had I not had an organization that understood this, it would have been very traumatic for me. And to be with her uh, when she transitioned was very important for me because I knew that she would not have wanted to be alone when that happened. And so uh, this is something that we want to ensure that we uh, do. And knowing the motivation of people, they may want to have this hybrid workplace where they work in the office a certain number of days and they work from home. So it gives them that flexibility, especially if they have young children that are not school age yet. And so it's something, and these are mistakes that a new person uh, would have. And uh, they might think, well, that person just wants some time off. They have a reason for being off. And it, when you, the better you understand this, you have to look at yourself. If you find yourself in a similar position, you, you want that help too. Uh, the next thing is uh, when we rush in the recruitment, we have a big project coming up and all of a sudden we don't have enough people to accomplish the work. Well, it's probably better to operate lean until you can get a qualified person with experience, the education, the training, who have done the work that you need, need completed. They've done that type of work before. And uh, it's very important that you don't rush a hire because you want to try to bring in the best talent that you can, but sometimes you just, that doesn't work out because it's very competitive nowadays, especially in this post-pandemic environment. And so as a result, uh, you may not be getting the best person that you're recruiting, but you need time to get them trained up, uh, have them uh, go through some immediate training, uh, have them meet everyone within the organization, have help them to understand what their role is, and then if they're a good fit for the organization as well, we have to also consider that. And uh, so it's important uh, that we don't hurry that recruitment, even though it's a very competitive uh, work, workforce nowadays. Uh, the next item that I wanna talk about is not walking the walk. You as a leader, you have to lead by example. If you find yourself taking personal calls or you're arguing with someone on the phone or you're not getting along, See, as a leader, you're really a role model. And as a role model, you can't find yourself out here getting a uh, DWI, driving while under the influence. And you can't be uh, in a situation where you're in a situation where you're actually fighting someone or arguing with someone in the workplace. And so as a role model, uh, you have to set the example because if you do things that are not normal, your employees are going to do the same thing because the first thing they're going to say is, well, my supervisor did it. My manager did it. My leader with the title, he or she did it. And so you have to really be cognizant of uh, what you are doing at all times. And then another problem, especially for new leaders, is they forget to delegate. So they're not delegating the way that they should. And so this is a major weakness because you're in a position, and even if you're a manager or supervisor, you still have a leadership role, just like an employee has a leadership role to be able to have high productivity, get to work on time, uh, being able to be on a team and have that ability to work with other people, good communications, on and on. And so it's very important uh, that you be able to delegate. If you're not delegating, then you're not leading and, and people want you to lead them. And uh, it's important that you do so. And last, uh, uh, misunderstanding your role as a leader. Because uh, when a, a leader, a person is in charge and they really don't know what their job responsibilities are. And if they don't know what they are, it's because they haven't asked. Or they haven't asked uh, for the job description, or what the policies call for, uh, what the company uh, standards are. So there's no reason not to understand what your role is in a leadership position. The only thing you have to do is to ask and people will tell you. In fact, they give you more information than you ever wanted. <laughs> so you, you always want to find yourself uh, in that position where uh, you know exactly what you're supposed to do. And then you want to exceed the standard. And mostly you'll notice standard because employees just tell it, oh, you're better than the previous supervisor or manager or leader with a title. They'll let you know. And uh, you'll want to know this. So I'll go over it real quick, just a uh, kind of synopsized thing is uh, not providing feedback to your employees, 
not taking time uh, for your team. That's very important. Uh, being too hands off, you want to engage and, and let people know what you're all about. Uh, being too friendly, uh, there's a, a balance that you need to get. Uh, be approachable, but not overly approachable. Uh, you want to still have that uh, little um, threshold uh, there, if you will, uh, not not to push people back, but to invite them in and then let them do their work. And then failing to define the goals, misunderstanding that motivation. Again, it's not all the way all the time about the money, but it's about the work-life balance. And then rushing to hire new staff. Uh, especially in this economy here, and then uh, not walking the walk, not being a role model, not delegating, that's weakness number one. And then misunderstanding your role as a leader. And so when we look at this, these are some common leadership mistakes or what we call rookie mistakes. And as long as we learn from them, uh, it's okay. You know, make some mistakes, but uh, just make sure that you you tighten tighten the um the reins, if you will, in terms of uh, trying to be the best that you can be. And part of that is uh, you can also uh, sign up for some leadership development training, or you can sign up for a leadership seminar or symposium. And you can also uh, get some books and read on that. But I deliver uh, leadership uh, coaching uh, primarily because it can get people out of the gate very fast. And uh, if, if a person really wants to be successful at something, they will go above and beyond the call, if you will, uh, to be the best that they can possibly be. And uh, I think for me, uh, when I I'll share just one of the weaknesses that I had when I first started, and my particular weakness was understanding what the organization was really about. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because the organization really didn't have any policies and procedures that they have. And so guess what happened? I was assigned the person to draft up all the language for it <laughs> and showing people where if you're in this position, this is what you're supposed to do. If you're in this, this job title, this is what you're supposed to do. And then, of course, I came up with mine. And uh, a lot of times uh, that is what, what is necessary. So that was a weakness initially, but it was strengthened as a result of seeing that there was no um, where to go in terms of having a resource to understand what the job was all about. And by the time I finished that particular exercise, it ended up being uh, organizational policies for the organization. Gosh, how many people did it impact? It impacted um, three, 300,000 people. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, so yeah, about three or 400,000 people. And, and so as a result, uh, it had never been approved for 52 states, territories, and possessions within the United States as a part of the National Guard. And uh, as a result of that, we will get all the adjutant generals or two-star generals for the different states, territories, and possessions to sign off on a document. So it's something that had never been done, but uh, helped to uh, bring it into fruition and it came through a lot of hard work and no one thought we would ever get it completed, but we did. And, and I think that's the beauty of it is nothing is impossible. <laughs> so uh, this is what I want to share with you today, some common weaknesses of leaders, especially those who are just starting out. And uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. I think uh, being inquisitive is really uh, your best, uh, best bet for achieving success. And when you stop asking questions and stop being inquisitive, that's when you're gonna run into problems. But uh, position yourself such that you always have an idea of what you should do, even if you don't know all of it. And there are more than enough people that wanna help you to succeed. And, and that's another important point for you to understand. No one wants to see you fail and you don't wanna see anyone else fail. Your job is to help your employees to succeed. And in order to do that, you have to be really in tune with what's going on within your organization on a project they're working on and, and, and with, for the company that you work with. But when the lines of communications are open, that's when you're in a good space. Again, I really wanna encourage you to go visit my website. Uh, again, I have it here, https colon forward slash forward slash www.paulvanspeaks.com.
S-P-A-K-S dot com, and you'll learn a lot more about the leadership development programs I provide for organizations virtually at, as well as in-house. So uh, thank you so much for your time today. And again, my time is up and I thank you for yours. My name is Paul Lawrence Van. And by the way, the uh, YouTube channel, Leadership is Influence, is way, making a lot of headway. And I have over a thousand subscribers now. And I'm about 2,600 people uh, who uh, have watch hours. So I figure by the middle of May, I should have about 4,000. Then I'll be able to do a lot more with it. Uh, putting ads in to, to get more visibility and get more likes. I think I'm sitting at maybe 14,000, give or take. And that's not bad because I started this uh, channel on April the 12th. So in 19 days, it's done quite well and it will do even more uh, over time. And uh, as I had on a previous uh, video, I just uh, told people, if you have any questions, you can reach me at info, I-N-F-O, the at symbol, and Paul, P-A-U-L, Van, V as in Victor, A-N-N, speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S dot com. If you have any questions from any of the videos that I have provided, or if you have uh, suggestions for topics underneath the leadership umbrella, if you will, uh, that you want to ask me, I'll be glad to, to assist you. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode of Leadership is Influence. Again, the name is Paul Lawrence Van. Have a wonderful day, and take good care for now, and thank you for your support.